Great. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning. We're obviously, uh, we got a lot of people that are, think it's summer already and vacation time for some reason. I am hopeful though that uh, the rain is going to stop. So, um, I, that's true, Jim. But I'm hoping, and it does show that the weather's supposed to uh, um, be nicer on uh, Wednesday, and we do have our fire and ice um, at uh, at our house um, on Wednesday night at seven. So that's a campfire with homemade ice cream. Um, I'll share a story and a devotion, and we'll just have a, a good time. So if you don't know where we live, talk to me afterwards, and, uh, and plan, on, plan on coming. Saturday, there's a birthday party for Jerry Moomy from 2 to 4. I think it's, you don't have to stay all two hours. It's that whole duration. So... Um, and then coming up the 25th is a celebration of life for Gene Sly at 2 o'clock. And the Northwest Christian Convention is, uh, um, starts next week at Turner. And there's some, uh, you can go to their website or there's some information on the bulletin board in the foyer. Any other announcements that we need to make? Oh, Vic wants to welcome the, everybody from our that's watching on Facebook. Um, want to thank all the people that showed up for our work party, and uh, we uh, appreciate uh, not just those who come when we have a work party, but those who come at other times and and help out, and and uh, it's. Our grounds is lo are looking a lot better, so thank you, thank you. If you want to turn to Jonah, uh, and chapter one, it's Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, uh, towards the end of the Old Testament. We're gonna be. Uh, I'll be preaching. Started last week on the on on this book of Jonah, and just uh, it's a it's only four chapters with forty eight verses, so you can go home and read it, the the whole thing. But we'll start in verse four. The Lord, the Lord hurled a great wind on the sea. And there's a great storm on the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors became afraid, and every man cried to his God, and they threw the cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, laying down and fallen asleep, sound asleep. So the captain approached him and said, How is it that you are sleeping? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. Each man said to his mate, Come. Let us cast lots so that we may learn on whose account this calamity has struck us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Would you pray with me? Father, as we come before you, we just uh, give you thanks and praise for your goodness and mercy towards us. Uh, thank you for, for your blessing. Thank you that we can gather today to worship you, to sing your praise, to hear your word being spoken. And God, we, we just uh, pray that you would do a great work in our lives today, in the coming weeks as we look at Jonah running away from God and, and that transformation in his life. And may we see that transformation in us as well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Peggy. 
Peggy left me a treat. Never mind. <laughs> We're going to get started. Who else didn't get the notice that it was supposed to be a vacation weekend? Look at that. All of you are missing. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people. So I'm glad that the rest of us are here. <laughs> if you'd stand with me, please. That means you have to sing louder. <laughs> or nobody around you so you can sing louder because nobody will hear you. Something. <laughs> There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not on him with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I Was I supposed to do one more, Mom? Mom wanted to do another verse. I don't know which one to pick, though. <laughs> okay, we're going. God is my refuge. <laughs> God is my refuge and God is my strength. A very present help in trouble. God is my refuge and God is my strength. A very present help. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. I mean, this is almost like word for word. This is, you memorize a verse when you know this song. It's exciting. Singing God's word back to him. God is my refuge and God is my strength, a very present help in trouble. strength a very present help in trouble therefore i will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea 
Good morning. We're trying to remember our old routine. Uh, this past Wednesday, Marianne and I learned that my dad broke his hip at the assisted living facility where he's been living for the last month. And then on Thursday, he had surgery and is doing very well. It's kind of amazing to expect to have him back on his feet within just a few days after the surgery. Um, since dad's 90th birthday last February, he has had to endure more and more illness and change than ever before. He's in a place in his life where nothing is guaranteed and he cannot take anything for granted. The only guarantee is that the Lord loves him and is always with him no matter what he's doing, going through. This reality is stark for him right now, but it is also a reality for each of us we are all on a journey through life where the only guarantee is the Lord's love and faithfulness. As a song sung by travelers, Psalm 121 speaks to the trust we can have in God throughout the journey. It is often thought to be a promise of protection for those actually traveling. David on his journey to Jerusalem Missionaries through dangerous regions on their way to their posts, travels to visit family, or just traveling for pleasure. As David looked to the far hills, he knew that his home was distant and his path treacherous. But he also knew that God is also always close, watching and protecting. The hills do not protect us but the one who created them does. Our peace and security is not dependent upon our physical location or our place in life, but on him. Psalm 121, I will raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Behold, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not beat down on you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time and forever. Each of us is on a journey, not necessarily one where we move from one physical place to another, but a journey through life, through thick or thin, happiness or sadness, life or death. Look to the creator of heaven and earth for your help, no matter what you are facing. Nothing will happen to you outside of his will from this time and forever. This morning we share the Lord's Supper as a way of remembering that sacrifice in love that Christ showed us to redeem us and to seal us in love for himself. There's no communion up here. Did you pass up the communion yet? Uh-oh. From Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28, Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, deaconesses, for providing this more traditional communion. Yet, I, I've really missed it. From Matthew 26, 26 through 28, now while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, as we look to the distant hills and see that we have a way to go, we are grateful to you for your love and faithfulness. We rest in you, the creator of heaven and earth. We acknowledge that our peace and security does not come from our station in life, but only from you. We pray for your protection for dad and for those who are facing uncertain times, those who are suffering and who are going through health challenges. May their and our trust in you give each one of us hope, and may we know this peace that comes only from you. In Jesus' name we pray. I ran across this little antidote. It says, contrary to popular belief, it wasn't an apple on a tree that got us banished from the paradise. It was, a, it was the pear on the ground, P-A-I-R. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like to talk a little bit about tithes and offering. I was looking in my Bible dictionary, and it gives a little bit of history about tithes. It says, just, just when and where the idea arose of making the tenth, the rate of paying tribute to rulers of, and of offering of gifts as religious duty cannot be determined. History reveals that it existed in Babylonian, in ancient times, also in Persia and in Egypt, and even in China. It is quite certain that Abraham knew of it when he migrated from Ur. Since Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High, it was certain that by Abraham's day the giving of tithes had been recognized as a holy deed. And it goes on and on and on about how the different uh, ways of paying tribute were uh, one of the main things that the Hebrews did was that they they had an offering for the Levites so that they would uh, be able to take care of the temple and, and also the priest could take care of the temple and that was their own, only duty so they had to have um, and then as we go to uh, The Passover, we see that we they, they had the grain offering. And so all these tithes and offerings are a way of us returning to the Lord what he has provided us with. And it, most of the times everybody thinks of money when they think of tithes and offerings.
And the question is, is your tithes and offerings supposed to be a certain percentage of your chem income, or should it reflect your love of God and that the prosperity that he has given you? It is written that he who has given much, who is given much, will be expected to give much. But there are other ways to share our tithes. Maybe we don't have much. You ever heard, I don't know if this is an old uh, word to me, moolah. Maybe you don't have much money. But maybe you could share yourself. Maybe you could help at the food bank or help with maintenance in the church building and grounds. But one thing that's been on my heart is that the sharing with our missionaries. Our church supports 12 different missions, some at home and some abroad. But I know that each one rejoices when we drop them a note uh, and, uh, and a note of uh, encouragement. Otherwise, we can give to the Lord also, besides monetary way, but giving of ourselves. And I'm think, I think that the Lord probably in, likes that one the best. Now with a uh, prayer, the offerings can be put in the uh, box here at the back. Our dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that we've been able to come together to share with you the prosperity that you have showered upon each one of us. I ask that you accept these uh, the same way that we accepted Christ into our life with joy and forbearance. Just love you and give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. We do have a number of uh, per concerns. Well, one of them is is uh, praise. Jim gave me a. a Note here that says it's Cheryl's 56th anniversary. So I would assume that it's yours as well, Jim. But <laughs> So happy anniversary. We want to uh, be praying uh, for the Supreme Court. We uh, saw in the news uh, about them arresting someone who uh, at Brett Kavanaugh's uh, home, trying with the intent to harm him. So we need to we need to be praying uh, for for their safety and uh, just praying that the they'd release their their uh, decision early uh, and as concerning concerning abortion so other thing we need to be praying uh, for the employees who uh, if you I don't know that you can listen to the news and not know that it's uh, what they call pride month and they are uh, those uh, employee employers who want their employees to uh, promote that and uh, from baseball teams wearing a patch on their uniform and some of the baseball players refusing uh, to do that to sh uh, and so we just uh, we need to be praying for uh, for these peop people who um, are standing up for their faith and uh, just for their that they can continue to be employed 
we also had uh, Randy O'Connor ask for prayer. Uh, he's got some ongoing stomach uh, problems. The Ruperts have some health issues, and we want to continue uh, keep Bob in our in our prayers as well. So let's bring these before the Lord. Father, we uh, we thank you for your word that. We have it in our own language, praying for those that are translating uh, your word in other languages, that you would uh, give them strength, give them insight. Forgive us, Lord, that here we have this, your word, and many times we uh, it goes unread. So I just ask that <clears throat> throughout America that the people who are called by your name, Father, would return to you, re return to reading your word, to prayer, to fasting, to repentance, Lord. God, we, we pray for the safety of Supreme Court justices and their families. I pray that... Uh, I pray that the law enforcement would do all that they can to protect them, that Congress would pass the bill to protect them, Father, that they would not be swayed by these protests. Lord, we also uh, pray for those uh, Christians that are standing up uh, against the uh, gay agenda and uh, refusing to uh, to acknowledge or be part of uh, promoting that, uh, that. And so I just ask for that you would keep them strong, uh, protect them, Father, from uh, retaliation. Lord, we uh, thank you for Jim and Cheryl's 56th uh, anniversary and just... Uh, Pray that a continued blessing uh, in their life. God, we uh, pray for Bob and and just uh, we pray for healing for his body. To pray that he'd feel your presence and, and your peace today. We do want to pray uh, for Nancy's sister Linda and as she's has lung cancer and meeting with the surgeon tomorrow to. Uh, decide uh, the date for that. We we're praying for that that would go successful, Lord. Uh, just keep her in your care, help her to feel uh, your hand upon her. We uh, do pray for the health issues uh, that the Ruperts have been facing and just uh, touch your healing hand upon both of them. Lord, we uh, do pray for Randy and, and for healing and uh, with his stomach issues. God, we, we do pray for uh, revival to take place within our churches, that we would, uh, we would see a, a, a renewed emphasis put on worship, put on your, reading your word, a renewed emphasis on prayer and fasting and repentance, Lord. God, that we might be a light in a dark world. We're praying that your spirit would uh, move in people's lives, drawing them to you, to salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd say a memory verse with me. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. You want to turn to Jonah in your Bibles?
As I shared uh, last week that we, uh, Jonah is uh, uh, just four chapters. Chapter one, it takes a look at Jonah running away from God. Chapter uh, two, running to God. And then chapter three, running with God. And chapter four, running ahead of God. All three of my kids uh, were runners and and I, I helped uh, coach in cross country and track. And the kids asked, well, Coach Stair, what did you do in high school and track? And I said, I didn't do anything. I played baseball. Well, how did you get into coaching track? I said, I couldn't get any of my kids to play baseball. And uh, as we... As we uh, think about uh, running and what uh, all that entails, it entails a lot of uh, a lot of practice. It tells a uh, a lot of dedication on the behalf of the runners. And I'm going to read just from Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. You can keep your, your finger there in Jonah because we're going to be going there. This is right after the great faith chapter mentioning the great men and women of, of faith in chapter 11. And it says, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So it says, let us run with endurance the race that is set us before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Well, when we think about this race of life that we're in, Many times, unfortunately, we see we're going, uh, running in the wrong direction. And Jonah was like that in chapter, verses 1, uh, 2, and 3. It talks about the word of the Lord that came to Jonah. He was told him that he was to go to Nineveh. And, uh, but Jonah, in verse 3, rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah is a prophet. He understands that you can't go anywhere without and, and get away from God, right? But he tried. He tried to, to uh, get away from the Lord. He fled. He ran away. And yet we see that God pursued Jonah. He did not give up on him. He did not allow him to, uh, to, to go away from the work that God wanted him to do. And so we read uh, chapter, verse 4 already about the great wind that um, came up. And how uh, the Lord hurled this great wind and a great storm on the sea so that the ship was about to break up. It is interesting as we see the sovereignty of God in the, throughout the book of Jonah. We see it in the sovereignty of God of the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And so God gave Jonah a mission. Well, Jonah didn't like that mission. He didn't want to go to Nineveh, and so he decided to go as far away from Nineveh as he could get. And he was going to go to Tarshish. 
And yet God, God was still in his life, even while he was fleeing from God. So often in our own lives, we uh, flee from God and it may, and, and, and that takes different forms. For Jonah, it was the mission that God sent him on that he was fleeing. For other people, they flee God in different areas. I mentioned about uh, God's word. God wants us to be uh, uh, disciples of his. He wants us to know his word, and yet so many Christians flee and run away from God and opening up his word so that we know what it says, so that we know who he is, so that we know what he's done for us. Many people will run away from God by running away from his church. And I say his church because it is his church. And he's the one who decided how the church was to be set up. And he made it for a place for us as believers to come together to worship. Come together to serve to each other. To pray with one another. To break bread with each other. And yet, for many Christians, church isn't important. And yes, it is true that you can worship God out on the mountain. But if you do that all the time, you're missing out on your mission in life. Because part of it, of all the one anothering that we get to, in the scriptures, in Paul's letters, the things we're supposed to do, we're supposed to encourage one another. I cannot do that when I'm out on the mountain by myself. I cannot encourage someone. I can't pray. I can pray for someone, but I can't pray with them. I can't worship with other people if I'm by myself. And that's why the church is so important. And yet people have ran away from it, saying, well, I don't need the church. I believe in God. But you're running away from a commitment, from responsibilities that God has given to every believer. To every believer. So, God sent the wind. He sent, sent the storm. And sometimes in, in we think about the, the bad things that happen in our life and, and it is... Sometimes it is Satan because we live in a, a, in a sinful world where babies get sick, where people commit terrible things. And, but sometimes... That trial that's in our life is there because we're running away from God. And God is pursuing us because he wants us to return to him, to his purpose.
Also in Hebrews 12, verse 6, For whom the Lord loves, he chastises, and scourges every son who he receives. If you endure, endure chastising, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chastise? But if you are without uh, chastising, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. And so we think about, oh, now no chastisement seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. You think about parenting and teaching our children and disciplining them because we love them, because we want them to become better individuals, because we want them to make good decisions. Well, that's a description here of what God does for us, his children, when we try to run away, when we are, do sinful things in our life, sometimes God brings a storm, doesn't he? Now, these sailors in the story of Jonah, they were afraid that the ship would uh, break up and so it says in verse 5 that they became afraid and every man cried to his God in verse 5. They threw the car cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship and had lain down and fallen sound asleep. A lot of times our running away from God causes other people to cry out to false gods because, because of our own, our own lack of confidence in God. Many times we destroy our witness, don't we? We destroy our integrity when we run away from God. And so these sailors are praying to their gods. Jonah's having a nap. He wasn't even aware the peril that he'd put people in. He'd fallen sound asleep. And many times when we're f running away from God, we are asleep to the damage that we're doing to other people around us. We're asleep to the fact that we're being hypocritical. We're asleep to the fact of the needs of those that we are hurting many times. So the captain approached him and said, how are you sleeping? Get up, call on your God. But it never says that Jonah prayed. These people who didn't believe in the true God, they were praying to their false gods, but Jonah, who should have known better, who could have repented and maybe God would have calmed the sea. He continued not to turn to God. And they, they decided to cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. And they asked him what was going on. And Jonah said in verse 9, he said, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord of God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. 
Then the men became extremely frightened, and they said to him, How could you do this? How could you do this to us? When we run away from God, when we uh, run to the world, when we are running to sin in our life, there's those around us, many times they won't say it to us, our face, but they can be saying, how can you do this to us? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. We only get a snippet of the conversation between the sailors and Jonah, but he told them that he had been fleeing, and that's why the storm was there. And they said, well, what should we do so that the sea may become calm? For the sea was becoming increasingly stormy. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. Even in their misery, even in their maybe losing their life, Jonah doesn't repent. He goes, just pick me up and throw me in. He could have jumped overboard, right, himself. However, the men rowed desperately to return to land. They were more concerned about saving his life than Jonah was about saving their life. When we run away from God, when we run away from his, his word... We can become very selfish, can't we, in our actions? To where we don't care about other people, just about ourselves so many times. So they tried to, they tried to save them, but it became, an, the strong became stronger. The storm became stronger against them. Then verse 14, then they called on the Lord and said, we earnestly pray, O Lord, do not let us perish on account of this man's life and do not put innocent blood on us. For you, O Lord, have done as you have pleased. Here are these people who, who were praying to their own gods just shortly before are now praying to the Lord, not thanks to Jonah's example, not thanks to Jonah. Uh, being showing him, them the way, but despite his terrible testimony, they turned to God. And so in ver verse 15, it says, They picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Then the men feared the Lord greatly, and they offered sacrifice to the Lord, and they made vows. Here's the thing, even, even in the midst of our rebellion against God, God's still at work in people's lives, isn't he? He was still at work in Jonah's life in drawing him back. He was in, at work in the sailor's life in showing his sovereignty and showing his power over the seas. It's not what it should have been though, right? But God is at work, and he's at work in our country, isn't he? You see the, the things that are going on politically, socially, morally in our country, and yet God is sovereign. 
He's still at work. And I believe that God is going to bring about a revival in this land. But it's going to take God's people repenting and turning away from sin and turning back to God and being a good example, being a light in the dark, waking up. We have been asleep for far too long as Christians. And we need to wake up. We need to return to his word. We need to return to prayer. And we need to call upon the name of the Lord. We need to repent for our country and our sinfulness. Verse 17, and the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. The fish only has a couple of verses in this story, but hey, that's the main thing that people remember. And for some people, Christians, they say, well, I don't, I don't really believe that. I shared about hearing that on the radio. And yet Christ, last week we, we uh, read in Matthew about Jesus proclaiming that just as Noah was in the fish for three days and three nights, Jonah, who did I say? Man. See, that's why you need to read the Bible for yourself and not trust your preacher all the time, okay? And I say that jokingly, but I say that very seriously as well. That you, we need to be people of the word. And so, just as Jonah was in the belly of the, of the well, of the fish, three days and three nights, Jesus said that he too would be in that same way. Not in a fish, but in the grave. And so Jesus believed <laughs> that a fish swallowed Jonah. And if we believe that God could just speak the word and that he did speak the word and the universe was created, no problem having a fish swallow Jonah that he was in and him living for three days and three nights. Are you running away from God? Are you running away from a mission that God would has has placed before you? God will pursue us. And God will sometimes cause the storms in our life so that we might turn back to him. So that we might get right with him. Aren't you glad that we have a father who cares? That when the prodigal son leaves, he's waiting and watching for his return to welcome him back. If you've been running away from God, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation to invite you to recommit your life to God. Maybe you've been running all your life from God and you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. You can come let me tell you, God has, pursued, has been pursuing you because he loves you.
But if there is a mission that God has placed on your heart, and you've made some excuses of why you can't fulfill that mission, the Bible is full of that, right? Gideon, oh, I'm the least of my family. Moses, I'm not able to speak. We need to respond. Hear my Lord, send me. Let's stop running away from God and start running with God. Come as we stand and we sing. Our Father in heaven, we come before your presence, and God, we just want to repent of our sinfulness, repent of running away from the mission that you have for us. God, for the times that we have, we have not shown people your love your grace and mercy. Father, help us to stand firm in our faith. God, that we might serve together, that we might be a shining light, and that many people might come to know the Lord because of our faithfulness to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.